Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today, courtesy of Legacy Collectibles, we have a very cool FN-1900 pistol to take a look at. This is a pistol that was part of one of a bunch of Russian contract purchases, and it is factory nickel-plated, which is a fairly rare thing for FN. And I think there's a very cool story behind this. So uh, the Russian army, like many others, allowed, if not required in some circumstances, officers to purchase and carry their own pistols. Now in this case there was a list of approved pistols that were eligible, and it included FN model 1900s, like this one, as well as 1903s and also 1905s. The 1903 being the slightly larger uh, version for in um, 9 by 20 uh, semi-rimmed, the 1905 being the basically the baby Browning, the little pocket pistol. And there was no like single specific Russian army contract for these pistols, because they weren't really formally adopted. But they were approved for officers to use, and a bunch of different Russian institutions actually they would purchase the guns uh, in bulk and then offer them as re by resale to officers. So let me show you this one up close. We'll take a look at why, how you can tell a factory nickel plating job on an FN, and also where this particular gun went. Russian purchases of FN pistols of all the different patterns occurred mostly between 1907 and 1914. Of course, in 1914 uh, Germany occupied Belgium, and that shut down FN pistol production for the duration of the First World War. And of course by the end of the First World War the Russian imperial government no longer existed and wasn't buying pistols. So like I said, these went to a variety of different institutions in Russia. We can do a little bit to date them. From the serial number here we know this pistol was produced by 1910, it might have been 1909, might have been 1910. Uh, note that this is 584,000. The FN Model 1900 was one of the very first really practical self-loading pistols, uh, and it was immensely popular. By the time production was over they would have built almost three quarters of a million of these guns, and that's really a tremendous number for a pistol that wasn't being manufactured in huge quantity for a particular military. Normally when we see that kind of, of number for production it's because, you know, some, some major first tier military bought half a million of the things. Well in this case the FN 1900 was adopted by a few small militaries like the Belgians, uh, but the vast majority of its sales were actually commercial, and to sell three quarters of a million of these pistols on effectively the commercial market is, is really the, the sign of a truly very successful pistol. Now most Russian purchased uh, FN pistols, among other, other things, will have a logo that is a crossed pair of most Nagant rifles. And we do not have that on this particular gun, but it wasn't a universal thing. Like I said, this wasn't a, like a formal imperial army contract. These, these pistols were bought in small batches by various institutions. So uh, one of them was uh, the Imperial General Staff School bought pistols. Um, the higher officers tended to get guns more like the FN 1905, the little baby pocket pistol. This particular one has this marking on it right here uh, in Cyrillic, and then a, a unit number or a rack number of 298. And this uh, actually stands for the Primary Gymnastics and Fencing School of the Imperial Army. Uh, a big thanks to Max Popienko for uh, translating that for me, for tracking down that marking. Uh, this was an organization that existed to train, basically to instruct training officers for the Imperial Army in fencing and gymnastics, and it existed from 1909 until 1917, and everybody who was at this school was an officer. This wasn't a, a school that the typical enlisted man went to, this was a school for those who would train the enlisted men. And so everyone there was an officer, and they were able to purchase their own pistols. So the school bought a bunch of, of pistols from FN, numbered them, marked them like this, and then resold them to its officer uh, students. Now the Russian contracts are a little bit unusual in that they included a lot of nickel-plated examples, like this one. Uh, FN never really advertised nickel-plated pistols itself, although its distributors did, and FN was willing to do this. Uh, as a factory finish, but they weren't really enthusiastic about it, and I think that's, that appears to be largely because 
they didn't do the nickel plating in the firearms division. They had the motorcycle division of FN actually do the nickel plating work. And the motorcycle guys weren't all that excited to take time out of their busy day to plate a handful of pistols. So they didn't do them very often, they would tend to do them in batches when there were enough stacked up. And FN didn't really do much to promote this. Now there are a few unique aspects to a, an FN nickel plated gun. Namely a few of the parts, like the trigger here, and the safety, and these two screws, were not actually nickel plated. They're not blued either. Uh, these have like a black priming process applied to them that was done to the whole pistol to make it uh, to make it ready for, for taking a nickel plate, but they just left these parts in that blackened state. And that was because they had found that if they nickel plated them the change in the surface thickness could impact uh, the pistol's mechanical functioning. So that's very distinctive of a factory FN nickel plating uh, process. You'll see those parts left in the black. The magazine, by the way, is also nickel plated with a blued follower to it. And you'll see that the magazine catch is not nickel plated. Uh, and, and this pretty well, th this covers the other FN pistols as well. The 1903s and the 1905s had the same style of, uh, you know, a handful of these parts left in their blackened state instead of being nickeled. If you're interested in learning more about these, I highly recommend Anthony van der Linden's book FN Browning Pistols. Uh, that's where the information for this particular video came from. Uh, and in fact this pistol is uh, photographed specifically in the book. Well there you go, I think it's a pretty cool story. Uh, you don't see very many nickel plated FN pistols, nor do you see very many of the Russian contract ones. So hopefully now you uh, know what to look for on those. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. A big thanks to Legacy Collectibles for loaning me this pistol to do the video on. Uh, if you're interested in firearms collecting and collectible firearms, definitely make a point to check out their YouTube channel. They have a bunch of cool videos up themselves. Thanks for watching.